We, in exercises one and two on the front, we're going to list the angles from smallest to largest. So first, to find the smallest angle, what do we look for? It's across from the shortest side. So which of these numbers is the shortest side? 16. And that is across from angle N. N. So that is the smallest angle. Our medium side is 18. It's across from angle L, and which means the longest or the largest angle is crossing the longest side, which is angle M. Make sure you're writing the angle symbol when you name an angle. The second, we're going to start with the smallest, which is the shortest side? X, X which is across from L. angle L. The medium side length? X plus 8, which is across from M like Marshall. And then last, the longest side is across from the largest angle, angle N. Number three, do we know everything we need to know in this triangle? We do not. How do we find the missing angle in this triangle? Add them and subtract from 180. Do the thing with the thing. What's 87 plus 21? 108. 180 minus 108 means that missing angle is 72. This time we're listing sides from shortest to longest. So start with the smallest angle. It's across from the shortest side. So smallest angle is? It's across from AB. Make sure you put a line above it when you name this side. What is the medium angle? 72. Angle B, and that's across from AC. It's the medium side, which means the largest side, or the longest side, is CB. <clears throat> Number four is a little harder. Which of these is the smallest angle? It is R. It's going to be X minus 4, whatever X is, minus 4. So what is the side across from angle R? QP. QP, PQ. Both are correct. And then the medium side length, or sorry, the medium angle is X. Across from that is PR, which means the biggest angle is 2X, which is across from QR. All right, last, we're naming the sides of the given triangle so that 115 does not necessarily have anything to do with our sides, but it will help us. What can I do to find the angles inside of this triangle? 180 minus 115 will help me find this angle because they are, what kind of relationship do they have? They're a linear pair. What is 180 minus 115? 65. All right, and then what do we do to find the missing angle? Correct. And then subtract from 180. What's 65 plus 52? 117. 180 minus 117 is? 63. So we still want shortest side. So what's the smallest angle? 52, which is across from? BC, so that's the shortest side. Our medium angle is 63. It's across from BD. And then our biggest angle is 65. It's across from CD. Good. Whenever you're ready, you can turn the page. It says copy and complete the statement. We're just going to write less than, greater than, or equal to. We do not have to explain our reasoning. You will not have to on the quiz, the test, or the exam. So we are comparing AC to DF. AC is across from 115 degrees, whereas DF is across from 110 degrees. So less than, greater than, or equal to. <coughs> AC is going to be greater than. It's across from the bigger angle. Number two, we got... Um, HGI. What's the vertex of HGI? G. G. That's the corner of that angle. So we're looking at this angle. 
And then we're comparing it to IgJ. What's the vertex of IgJ? G again, so we're looking at this angle. HGI is across from 6. IgJ is across from 6, so that means these two are equal. We have angle 1 is across from 11. Angle 2 is across from 14. So it's angle 11 less than, greater than, or equal to? Less than. And then last, you could probably just look at it. We have the length of KL, and we're comparing it to the length of MN. KL is across from 19 degrees, whereas MN is across from 35. So less than, greater than, or equal to? Less than. Wonderful. We have one more section, at least it's printed here. Um, write and solve an inequality. <clears throat> so we have x plus 7 and 2x minus 3. They're both angles. Um, so we're going to compare them, comparing 2x plus 7. Sorry, just x plus 7. To 2x minus 3. 2x plus 7 is across from 2, whereas... 2x minus 3 is across from 3. So is x plus 7 less than, greater than, or equal to? It is less than. It is across from 2. What is the only extra rule when solving an inequality? If you do something certain. If you divide or multiply by negative. If you divide or multiply by a negative, what do we have to do? Flip the sign. So I always move the smaller x so that I don't have to flip the sign. 2x minus x is x. Minus 3 is on the right side. Add 3. So we have 10 is less than x. If I wanted to flip that around, if I were ever to be asked to graph, what would happen to the sign? You'd flip it. So 10 is less than x is the same as x is greater than 10. All right, and then last we have 6x, six, 6 times x plus 1 and then 14x minus 10. So we're going to compare them. Are they going to be less than, greater than, or equal to? Greater than. 6 times x plus 1 is uh, across from the bigger angle. Distribute, we'll get 6x. 6 times 1 is? 6. Move the smaller x. So then we have 6 is greater than 8x minus 10. Add 10. 6 plus 10 is 16. 16. So 16 is greater than 8x. Divide by 8 and 2 is greater than x. Or if I wanted to flip it around, what would it look like? X is, two. x is less than 2. Good. This is not printed on your page if you want to write it down. Perfect. If you don't, then it's up to you. Um, the only extra thing that was in 6.5 and 6 was whether lengths form a triangle. What was the rule about three lengths forming a triangle or not? The two smaller ones yeah, so the small side plus the small side had to be greater than the, we'll say long side. So let's pick an example of what would not work. So what three would not work? Two, two, and five. They don't work because it's two plus two greater than five. No. No, so that one doesn't work. Let's pick one that will work. So pick a yes. What would you say? 6, 6, and 5, yep. What are the two smaller lengths? 6 and 5. 6 and 5, is that greater than 6? So that would be a yes, okay? That's it. You can clear your desk of anything besides a pencil and a calculator if you want one.